Hello, this is Matthew Miller from ZDNet, smartphones and cell phones and mobile gadgeteer blogs. I'm going to do a little test that we did at um, the Google Android T-Mobile launch event a couple weeks ago. And I have my iPhone, original iPhone here, and the T-Mobile G1 on this side. Um, right now they're both sitting in my blog, unfortunately. The Android keeps the browser keeps defaulting to the mobile version. I haven't figured out how to spoof that yet or change it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in um, something like CNN.com and then I'll turn the camera back on and I'll hit go on both and we'll kind of time it via Wi-Fi connection and see how fast uh, they are side by side. Back at the event it seemed like the uh, Android browser was quite a bit slower even via Wi-Fi. So let's see what happens. Okay, I've entered CNN.com. Now I'm going to tap, I'm going to attempt to tap go on both of them at the same time. Let's see if I can do that and we'll see what uh, what they time it here. Let's see how they go. Looks like I hit both pretty close to the same. So we'll see as they're loading each page. Uh, looks like uh, the iPhone jumped real quickly to the CNNmobile.com website. And the G1 is loading the CNN full website. Still loading, but it's loading the full one. So let me go ahead and stop, which uh, you can only access by pushing the menu and then. Uh, Oh, it's finished now. So let me try another website. Let's give it another try. Okay, now this site I know pretty much never uh, returns me to a mobile version. This is the seattletimes.com website. So here we go. Let's see if uh, let's see if I get go on both of these again. Here we go. One, two, and three. Ah, dang it! I missed. I missed the Android one, so it's a little bit behind. Let's. Stop both. Has to do it again, just a second. Okay, let's see if I can hit it again. Let's try this again. Here we go. One, two, three. Looks like the iPhone starts putting it up there first. If you look at the status bar, they're both kind of the same. iPhone's got a nicer layout there. iPhone is done. G1 is now done. So it's pretty close, but as you can see, the default views are quite a bit different. The Android will, uh, you know, it'll give you the, if you move around on it, gives you the option to zoom in and out. But it starts off by zooming you in uh, to start off with to where you can actually read it, whereas the iPhone, you cannot do that, but you can quickly double tap. On the Android, you cannot do double tapping or tapping or holding or anything. It uh, You need to kind of move around like this and then zoom in with the buttons and the controls so it's not quite as clean of a takes a little bit more practice to uh, to surf around but it is a powerful browser as you can see it will give you the full web on some sites um, but just takes some more time to play around with okay before I uh, turn off the light so we can see the screen a little bit more I just wanted to let you know I've been playing with this now for about four and a half days and I'll let you listen uh, to some of the creaking that's kind of happening on the, and watch some of the motions on the screen here. So as you can see, there is a little bit of movement. It's still pretty tight when open and closed, but you can definitely down here where it uh, where they touch each other, it will make some creaking noises as you push on it, and it rocks a little bit. There's a little bit of play, which, you know, I guess that's part of being a version 1 product. It does have a screen that moves quite a bit, so there is some play in it. Um, now, I also wanted to show this. Let me just go ahead and turn off the light so you see a little better. This is the uh, Android unlock screen. It's actually a uh, visual pattern, and uh, so when you turn it on, it happens to be that. Right now, I've got a G, so you just circle your finger around. And if it's correct, now let's go into settings and I'll kind of show you that where that's set up. And since security and location uh, require the pattern, use a visible pattern, and um, change the unlock. So let's go ahead and change the unlock. Here's our current pattern. Now we draw one that we want to do. You can do something like an L. Continue. Now if I did it wrong, it gives me an error. You have to confirm it, so I do it twice, right? 
and confirm. Now I'm not sure what this uh, visible or not is, so let's try unchecking the visible. And let me turn it back on. Push on lock. Okay, so it's the same thing as you can see. It's just that uh, it is not visible with my finger as I draw the pattern. Now, that's all well and good, but uh, one thing is, with the screen grease on this, my daughter, I had a uh, had a pattern in there. She's like, oh, well, I can just see where your finger was by the uh, face grease that's on there and where your finger traced. So I think that uh, may still need some work, but it's uh, kind of an interesting locking mechanism. I uh, also have some more notifications here. just kind of wanted to show you a few of those. As you can see, I installed a couple new applications, Splash Play and TuneWiki. I have some new email messages. We have a calendar reminder, and uh, oh, these are text messages here, and a new email here. If I tap the text messages, I believe there's uh, a couple there. That's what the text messaging looks like. Ones that are unread have a little green thing with it, and the other ones do not. Today I was showing this off at uh, work, and I got to thinking, with the Android market still doesn't have very many applications, but as it gets more and more applications, it doesn't seem to be a way to have more than three uh, home screen panes. So I was thinking, how in the world, if I want to load like 50 applications like I do at times on my mobile devices, will I be able to do this? Then I remembered, if you come in here and you tap and hold, and you can add to home, you can add different you know applications, widgets, wallpaper, but there's also in the shortcuts, if you notice when you scroll through there, there's options for a bookmark, a folder, contact, Gmail label, and music playlist. So if you tap folder, you can then add a folder there. I'll actually go ahead and throw this folder away, and as you can see, it turned red, I threw it away. Because I've created a folder here called Games, and then all you do is you just tap on the icon and throw it into the folder. So you can customize how you're going to organize this. And as you see, if I tap on Games, I've got three games thrown into that folder. It has kind of an opaque background, you can still see your home screen, home screen panels. And if I was to uh, tap and hold on the title, I can then change the name of that folder. I don't see a way to change the type of look and feel of the icon of the folder, but you can rename it. And so that way, you can easily organize all of your applications the way you want on three panels and folders, so there should be plenty of room for customizing it.